Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Breaking Barriers Now. Today my guest is Kalina Powell. She is in Toronto, Canada. And from what I've read about her and just from the conversations that we've had, I can already tell that you are going to be just an inspiration to a lot of people. Um, you're young and just your mindset is, is one that I'm, I'm excited to share because I think a lot of people need to understand that we're not victims of our circumstances, right? And we can um, reshape our future based on what we're dealing with. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me, having me on your face. Thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, so I want to kind of start out with, you know, what you're kind of doing now. Um, and, and nobody out there knows exactly where your story is going to go. So I'm not even going to tell them because if they're watching this, they, they probably can't tell what we're going to talk about. <laughs> oh, no, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> because in looking at you, you look just fine, right? There's no, there's no difference. And I want people to understand that, that we're not different just because of whatever, right? We're different because we are people who are different, but that doesn't mean that we can't accomplish anything that we desire, right? So let's let's dig in a little bit um, with what you're doing now. Tell us a little bit about yourself and and let's talk about, you know, how you kind of had to what you went through to break the barriers that you had to break as a kid to get to where you are now. So, okay, so I'm gonna do a background check of who I am, what I'm doing now. Um, so, so my name is Tina, so I am a young entrepreneur. I help people how to be inclusive for the deaf community and the community. Little do people know, I am a deaf You'll be like, what? Yes, I ran hair and age. I did <laughs> deaf at the age of four. Oh my goodness. Oh, literally like change. So I was in two communities, which is kind of cool. At the same time, it was a bunch of um, Because I had to advocate for myself a lot, right? And, um, but yeah, we'll talk about that after. So yeah. I am a <laughs> I am mental health coach for people who have disability. Okay. I have, yeah, then I'm a coming out. I have a book coming out, which I'm super excited. And my book is called Every Day I Am Stuff. My purpose is about moving definitely and community. That way, the next community can get their special from one of my staff. Yeah. And so um, that would be really cool and interesting. I am a special speaker that spoke to a lot of like, podcasts, schools, and now I'm actually going to be talking to a mentor, which I have announced that and I save it. So if you really want to know what's going on with me, follow me on my Instagram. Oh, there you go. So what's your Instagram? Let's go ahead and put that out there. Yeah, Deaf Queen Boss. Love it. Love it. So you guys make sure you go follow her and, and just keep up with her. By the time the show airs, it's going to be interesting to see where you're at. But we're, <laughs> we're, we're not going to fast forward too much yet. I want to make sure that, you know, that we talk about, you know, because you said you went deaf at the age of four. Yeah. And, you know, so you weren't born with that. And like I said, you guys, if you're watching the YouTube video, you would never know, right? No, so no. how do you kind of, you know, not only how did you manage that at such a young age, but how do you deal with it now? Because people don't know the difference when they see you. Um, how I do with it now, um, I think people are starting to be a little bit more educated due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of more social media platforms. There's always new apps coming up. So there's always someone new participating in society. Yeah. And, um, so I feel like there's a little bit of awareness to help the community much. Um, but I do have challenges because of the pandemic. It really affects me a lot. Because mm. I am a lip reader, so I have to be less lot to have a couple of difficulties. And the max of it the lip. So it's very hard for me to exact people publicly. I prefer not to go out in public as to literally stay home and do FaceTime or video calls. So, yeah. Like, like literally, pandemic really affects me a lot to go outside, especially when I'm working too. Like, you have to wear masks at work. 
But luckily, um, my boss, they found a clear mask for me, so if they need to talk to me, they'll put on the clear mask for me, so I can Nice. Yeah, they're really sweet, like that. Like, I love yeah. them. And so, um, I guess, that's me. They got higher of it, they're like, yeah, can yeah. you <laughs> Hi. And they go up there, I'm like, okay, like, you know, like, because they don't have, like, they're just like, like, they're so over COVID. Like, everybody's over it right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was over it before it started, but we won't even get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See, we won't even get to that. So you know, like I, that's like, a whole another podcast in itself, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's interesting. I had actually said that because you know, and I've I've met people who were either hard of hearing or deaf in my life, you know, and so. I thought about that because I, you know, I like, I think that our facial expressions can tell a lot about us, but about us too. And so, you know, when we had to start wearing masks, I was just like, wow, nobody can actually see my facial expressions. But then I thought about people who need to be able to read lips. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I love that you talked about, you know, how your the people around you were wearing the clear mask. So I think that's really pretty amazing. It says a lot about them. And the fact that they were paying attention and, yeah. and noticing what they needed to do, you know, how they needed to shift to help you. So that's a good thing. Um, but let's, so let's talk a little bit about your upbringing, you know, like where, where did you grow up and, you know, anything that you want to share as far as that's concerned? And then, you know, how did you find out that you were deaf at the age of four? Okay. Get ready for popcorn people. Here we um, go. <laughs> It's really a long, it's not a long story, but it's a very short story. So basically what happened is I ended up getting an ear infection. Um, I went to the doctor, they gave me an ear drop for my ears, my infection, no problem. I went to daycare, that's what happened. Mm. I went to daycare, the staff members did not even follow instruction or put at the right time or they put too much in my ear. Oh yeah. my so that same day, when I got home, I, I became deaf. Like I was watching TV and then my mom was calling the cleaner, hello, are you not hearing me? And I'm like, no, oh, like, I didn't know she was calling me. And um, my mom started freaking out. Imagine, my mom's a young mom at the time. Like she was like 20. Like, I, I couldn't imagine like the time, like her face was like, she was probably like 23, 24 when she had, mm -hmm. yeah, four, yeah. So it was just, it was just crazy. My mom was really young and she was like graduating from college, getting her stuff together. Luckily my grandma was a nurse. So I was my grandma and said, hey mom, like, Please not hear me. My grandma said, Oh, she's just joking around. That's what young kids do, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So my grandma said, Okay, put her on the phone. I can hear my grandma on the phone. So my grandma was like, Okay, this is not funny. Cause especially me, like, I'm really close with my grandma. So I have really recognized my grandma voice all the time. So um, so my grandma said, She can't hear me through the phone. That's bad. So my grandma rushed from the hospital to come home to sit down with me, try to figure out what's going on. My grandma did a couple of weird things with me, like texting, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, and then so she like, she looked at my mom and said, and that's when I realized that something was wrong. And I was like, whoa, what's what? like I'm like, hello. And then that's when I started to realize I couldn't hear. I'm like, I was like, and then like, and then I saw my mom. She's like, what's up? And she was like mad, like she was just, like aggressive. And then my grandma was like, like freaking out. And then she was on the phone, so she called my family doctor to book the phone the next day. Say, hey, like it's an emergency, we need to come see you right now. And we went to the family doctor, they said it's too late. I mean, they're completely deaf. So that's right there, like my whole life is shit. Like it's a huge changing for my family because I'm actually the first person that's deaf in my family. Mm -hmm. And so it was my family had to learn a whole bunch of things like um like the deaf school, the deaf community, resources, this and like it was a lot for my family. And yeah. um, I ended up going to a deaf school and a hearing school. So my family did that just to help me to understand who I am. Just because they would think that I'm gonna be confused in a hearing community where I should be put in my community. Especially being young, starting school, you don't know what's going on. You don't know who you are. And so <sighs> I'm grateful that they did set that up for me. So in the morning I would go to the deaf school and in the afternoon I would go to hearing school. So it helps me to learn how to communicate with two community, learn how to be like a two different person in two different yeah. So it's kind of cool, you know. Um, and I learned a lot about advocating for myself in the deaf school than I was in the high school. 
Mm-hmm. So that school really taught me how to be advocate for myself and bring it into the hearing school. So that way I can be like, hey, can, uh, so and so and so and I need this. And so I, I learned over time, but at the same time, the teacher didn't know how to accommodate me properly as the deaf school. Mm-hmm. And I guess because I am the first disability person they ever came across to. Yeah. So a lot of times the principal did not respect my family. The teaching boundaries, they were to put me in different rooms, but the room that I was not supposed to. Wow. And it was really, yeah. Like, I only went home and my mom was in the house. My mom was like, are you kidding me? And my mom was like, cool. My mom kept going and going. Imagine, like, for that one day, my mom finally graduated from the social worker program, or child abuse worker. And she came with the basket to work. It was crazy. She was like, oh. And that's when they wow. stop and they see that my mom is, like, a worker. Like, she's not just a typical regular mom. But she's, yeah. like, a mother that works with yes. her. Yes. I'm trying to. That's been things that really got, you know, bet, a bit better, but it would have been a lot better if they were doing at the beginning. It's like, why do my mom just come in with the back to show, like, represent me? Like, are you kidding? Like, you're supposed to do your job from day one. And um, obviously, I got bullied, you know. I was going to ask about that. Like, how, how was it uh, at school and things like that? It was not good. Like, I was like, I remember this like yesterday. I was, I was put down on a hill. Because I and the kids thought I was in, like I don't know the kids thought I was not listening I don't remember and it was just bad but I remember I had to go to the hospital because my arm was like so bruised and they pushed me on a, like, a hill and the hills were really deep wow so I was, like fuck yeah it was really bad and my best friend would have to come attack the bully it was just crazy like how old were you at that time grade one how old grade one so that's like what seven eight oh my nine. goodness yeah yeah. I was eight or nine, yeah. So you were getting bullied at that age. So how did you keep going through that? You know, because there's a lot of kids that get bullied anyway, but then to get bullied because of this, you know, it's not something that you could control. So how did you get through that? I got through it by literally building them back a little bit. Um, my family told me, you have to stand up for yourself. Sometimes you're going to have to say something to the bully. And so I did that, and my family did their job. They came to school, report, report, like crazy. And, um, you know, my family didn't stop. They kept going. They didn't care. They're like, I'll be annoying until you make the bully stop. Why did my child be bullied because of a disability? What the hell? Yeah. And so, um, so I did my part, just, you know, and I had a really good uh, support of friends. They all stood up for me. You know, they all got my back until this day, we all best friends to this day. That's awesome. I was like, wow. Oh my God, they're my best friend. So they know um, how to like help me out with things. Um, they, my, my, one of my best friends, she would get so mad. Like, she would literally throw the rock at these police. <laughs> you, oh my God, no. And she's like, I don't care. Like, stop bullying Kalina right now. Like, my best friend was so, like, I never seen her mad in my life. <laughs> That's good though. You know, it's good to have people like that that we know have our backs, right? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. It sounds like you had a really good support, kind of a really, I mean, there's always going to be bullies. There's always going to be people who they're just people, right? (laughs) But it's good. It sounds like you had enough other people in your corner that helped you kind of get through. So that's really good. So what can you say to encourage anyone out there that might be going through what you're going through and maybe they don't have that support network? What would be some words of encouragement you could leave for them? I would say first, um, you're not alone. There's always gonna be someone that's going through it. The same thing you're going through. Second, if you don't have the family support to support you, may have to go out there and find a resource in terms of community centers for the deaf or community centers for disability. And third thing, there's always a Facebook group that's available. I have a lot of Facebook groups and participating in. They're really helpful. They actually helped me a lot, too, like about different hearing loss, which I didn't know, mm-hmm. and helped me with that. So you can literally um, get yourself out there by social media. 
social media. Connect with people, you know, that's how, that's how easy I was able to get my community from Instagram and Twitter and Clubhouse. But social media is so big now, people just go on it and connect with different people. Mm-hmm. And I know you may be shy, but I just want you to know that there are people out there who want to help you overcome your fatigue and your failure and who, who actually want to go beyond for you. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the premise behind uh, this other platform that I've been using. It's called Convene Communities, and we come together, and it's basically to build out a support network, you know, for entrepreneurs, for authors, for coaches, for um, just the everyday person who wants to do more. So um, I love what you're saying, because that's true. It's like, we have to have those people, and and I say this a lot, it's not always the people that are closest to us. Sometimes it's people we don't even know yet. (laughs) It's true, it's true. Well, let's talk a little bit about the shift. Okay, so how did, you know, going through high school, how was that experience, the high school experience? I know that's, you were talking about seven, eight, nine years old getting bullied. How was high school for you? High school is funny. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because I finally overcome all these bullies in middle school, elementary school. I was able to advocate for myself. They are spoken. Um, high school really was not too bad. I guess that. I guess because I was able to be they all spoken about my needs. And I think, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, and I felt more confident in myself in terms of saying, yeah, I'm done. So what? What are you going to do? You're going to bully awesome. me now? So, like, yeah, like, I just have that confidence. Like, okay. Yeah. And so um, I never was really bullied in high school. I feel like people would just, just talk bad about me, like, behind my back, I guess. And there'll be a lot of rumors about me. And, like, oh, yeah, actually, I think that's well. Like, <laughs> I took a high school, right? There's always rumors. Right. <laughs> There's always that. Always. So, I think there that that's in life though. That it never stops. <laughs> never stop. Exactly. And I felt like high school really prepared me for life in general, saying that no matter where you go, people are always gonna talk. It really depends on how you react. And that's what high school taught me. How do I react? And um reacting was definitely a key thing that I learned in high school was not react. I remember the first week of grade nine. I got into a fight with this girl because she was talking about me. But really, she, but then I got myself in trouble because the girl was trying to explain to me. She didn't. Someone else was saying, she's like, what the heck? Why are you bullying this girl? So it was a whole misunderstanding. A misunderstanding, yeah. yeah. And then I got into myself a fight the first week of high school in grade nine. It was just crazy. Oh and then goodness. that's when I realized, like, whoa, like, clean is a death girl. And she, like, they, like, first week of high school, like, what? A lot of people wouldn't do that, right? People would be like, oh, never mind. But I guess because, because of that reaction I had, I guess people would show like, whoa, I'm not going to mess with them. Not going to mess with <laughs> Yeah, right? So, like, because of my past, it really did help me to understand that. I need to be careful of my reaction, even though I do want to speak up for myself. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's not worth it. Right. And so kind of I- channeling your energy, right? Exactly. That's exactly. I ha- I've had to learn that, and God bless you for learning it early in life. How old are you? <laughs> Twenty four, everybody. Oh my goodness! So I could be your mom, but <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, because you know, most a lot of us don't learn those things until way later in life. So the fact that you learned so early, that's just that's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, because all my from my past, from bullied a lot, and it taught me a lot. And I said, "Oh wow!" Like, and then when I got to high school, that first fight, that's when it clicked me. Like, not every problem or every drama needs a reaction. Right. It it literally got me in trouble because I got suspended, of course. And I was like, "Great!" And just because I was talking out for myself, I'm so confused. And then that's when I realized that I'm not trying to get no more trouble. Yeah. Gotta find that balance, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about. So you, you graduate high school, right? Yeah. So how did you get into entrepreneurship? Because this is a big one, and a lot of people are afraid 
to get into entrepreneurship. I kind of got forced into it, but now I know this is where I was meant to be. <laughs> but again, I didn't learn until way later in life. So how did you realize so early that that you were meant to be an entrepreneur and impact lives? Okay, so I graduated from university from psychology. Okay. And, um, I think I was in, I, I think it was like a human behavior class. Mm. And um, the professor said something about like being your own business or being your own boss. And I didn't really get it because I was in like, my second year in university. So I'm like, oh, like, um, we've been told to go to school, get a job, and that's it. Yep. So it was funny how she was talking about that. And then I, I did my research, the ship and ship, whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's too hard. Screw this, right? But then when I when I started having a job at the time, you know, starting to work for myself, getting my own money, not having that money paying for money, you know, getting older, you know. Um, and that's when I realized, like, okay, it's just too much. Like, work environments are too hectic. There's a lot of people so negative. And then I know so too because of my disability and being deaf, I knew that this wasn't for me because mm -hmm. it was too toxic. It was too, it was a little too much. I and mean, it's draining for me because my eyes is my mouth. You know, I mm -hmm. have to continue to look at your lips like 20, like like an eight hour ship and it's time for me. And that's when I realized, okay, this is not what I want to be in my mm -hmm. life. And um, until then, I, um, I started working at, a big park in Canada's Wonderland, and a little boy approached me. Magno, I was on break, and my hair was in a ponytail. My hair ain't showing up. I didn't even care because it was hot, super hot. <laughs> a boy came up to me and said, "Man, oh my God, you wear hair ain't so do I." I'm like, "No way!" And I'm like, "Oh my God!" And we just had a little small talk. And his mom came to me, full of joy, and said, "Since you have your hair up in a ponytail, oh my God, like you're the first person that my son sees." That is deaf in the hand community. And wow. she said, if you get that, you are going to make a world the change. You're, you're like just by doing that. And I and that's a hit me and I said, maybe I should become a deaf advocate. For the deaf community, teach them how to flip and get there. And that's when I realized I'm like, that woman's actually true because when I was growing up, I didn't have anybody that was deaf. Community. And then that hit me hard and I said, maybe I, I meant to walk there. And um, and then when I slowly, you know, graduated from university, doing a little bit more research, what can I be after? And um, and then I started speaking, um, and um, and I networked with a lot of people, and then that's when I started meeting my my business coach, and I asked her like, hey, I want to do this, and she said, Kalina, you need to get your your voice out there. Like this is insane. Like no one's educated about that. Right. And I said, really? I'm like me, and I was nervous. Imagine, I was just thinking about this, but someone randomly came to me said, you need to get out there. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And because that little boy that actually showed me that there's no one like me in the world, it's crazy. And um, so, yeah, so that's how it all started. And now I'm an international speaker. I spoke a lot of friends' podcasts. And I have a big opportunity to speak to School for the Deaf in Canada, which I'm super excited. Yes. And then I just did a, a big deaf association for the big organizations in Canada, just for the deaf people, the number one organization in Canada. I did a presentation for them about opening a business, teaching the deaf community how to start a business because there's no, if you look at it, there's no disability person that own a business. It's like, really? Why? Yeah. It's like, why? They're not. And you know what I realized? Because there's so many lack of education, lack of support. There's not that much. For the disability community, so this is why I come in the picture. Chief disability people, do our business. Who cares? It's all, it's always grant money. It's always loan you can call. There's so many things you can do with the business. Yes. And I feel like because we've been so bullied over time, we feel like no one's gonna support us. But a lot of those people know, in the disability community, there are a lot of people that's gonna support us. Yeah. You just gotta take yourself out there. And and that's when I realized this is this is meant for me. Wow. That's so awesome. That is so awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the book, because by the time this airs, your book should be out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about, you know, your book and what inspired you to write a book. Honestly, I realized that there's no deaf book. If you notice, 
tell them to write the book about that. And I said, why not just write a book and let's see what this book takes me. And uh, my goal is actually teach the next generation to be themselves no matter what they are. Either you're deaf, blind, can't do speech, or you know, you can't do anything, you can't do anything. Buying a book it shouldn't be difficult. And I tell people that, you know, my goal for my book is really teach the next generation to be themselves get it out there, change the world in terms of how to make the two community get together. And that's what I always want. You know, I don't want the community to just separate it. Like, right. um, I don't want that. Like, you know, because I grew up in two community, I, I don't like the separation. I don't, it's, I feel like it's a lot of pressure on me and it's like, oh my God, okay. And then people will come to me who are deaf and they're like, I can't um, able to access this thing because they want to, so I would have to go do this for them. You know, now I'm a deaf person, but yeah. because, I am so not knowledge knowledge about the community itself. Wow. Uh, I have so many like things going on in my head right now because I'm just I'm I'm grateful for you for being willing to take a risk (laughs) because you know we're taking risks when we decide to go into business and do those things. Um, but for taking a risk and not listening to people who probably were like, oh, that's not going to work out, right? But you still did it and you're still doing it. And that's, that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you that you are going to have a positive impact on a lot of kids. I have a 12 year old and she needs to hear someone like you because these kids the kids for the most part they're not getting taught in school that they can believe in themselves and that they can do anything other than go to school and get a job right like that that's what that's what society teaches us and that's why i did it I went to school, I went to college, and then I went in the military and and I got a job and and then I didn't like any of that. <laughs> I, did. I was like, no, there's got to be more. <laughs> like <laughs> So I definitely applaud you for being willing to step out on faith at such an early age. 24, girl, you are going to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness uh all right well let's talk a little bit about um you know your business and i know you said people can find you on instagram is there any other way that they can connect with you at this point yeah definitely um so um so my business uh so it's like so it's a coaching business i uh, offer service in one-on-one and um parents family support and people with disability However, I am open to other um, categories, not just like for disability people. Right. But my goal is to help you overcome your self esteem, work on anything that you would like to work on, um, like personal growth, resume, work, job experience, and then such stuff. Um, and so, and if you really want to work with me, you can book me on my website. I have finally, uh, it's KalinaEmpowerment.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kalina, I have been blessed by your presence today, and I'm just grateful that you were able to come on here. And we said everything happens in due time, right? So at the right time, that's when things are supposed to be. So thank you for sharing that story. And I just, I really pray that this has a great impact on a lot of people, um, just to be able to hear how someone was able to get through every barrier that was thrown at her (laughs) and and be able to you know really break through and and just be be who you're meant to be yeah oh my goodness that's so awesome well i look forward to definitely also seeing what the future brings for you and if you ever make it down to florida to speak make sure you let me know (laughs) i'll let you know of course (laughs) you guys Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks to everyone who is continuing to support this show. 
Um, make sure you follow, subscribe, share the show with everyone out there. The more voices that are speaking, the more we're able to save lives. So the more we're sharing these shows and continuing to share our stories, the more of an impact we're going to be able to have together. So Kalina, thank you so much for being here. And I definitely look forward to following you on your journey. So thank you. thanks everybody for tuning in. This has been another episode of Breaking Barriers Now. We're here to save lives and we're just going to keep going. So thanks again for tuning in. Again, make sure you subscribe, follow, share, and we will see you next time. God bless.